Prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. And all God's people will see salvation by our God. Prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. And all God's people will see the salvation of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. My dear friends, we gather this Monday of the fourth week of Advent. Our Advent wreath light is now complete as we await the birth of Christ into our hearts and into our homes during this Christmas. As we gather here today, first to give thanks for the gift of breath, for the gift of life, for the gift of Jesus. I ask you today now to also think of our sinfulness. Let us ask God for mercy, but let us rejoice because God sent Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us pray. O God, eternal majesty, whose ineffable word the Immaculate Virgin received through the message of an angel, and so became the dwelling place of divinity, fill with the light of the Holy Spirit. Grant, we pray, that by her example we may in humility hold fast to your will through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be as deep as the nether world or as high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask, I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary men? Must you also weary my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let the Lord enter. He is the King of glory. Let the Lord enter. He is the King of glory. The Lord are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it, for he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Let the Lord enter, for he is the King of glory. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is in vain. Let the Lord enter, he is the King of glory. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Let the Lord enter, he is the King of glory. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. gates of God's eternal kingdom. Come and free the prisoners of darkness. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. At coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. 
He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How could this be, since I have no relations with a man? The angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month of her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the Advent season is really a very unusual season for us because we are preparing for the nativity of Jesus, of which has already happened thousands of years ago. But if you think about the season that we have been celebrating now for almost four weeks, it really is divided into two parts. You know, the very first part of Advent really spoke to us about the end times, calling us to conversion because Jesus was coming to judge the good and the bad, the living and the dead. And then really right around December 17th, exactly at December 17th, the readings then all of a sudden changed. And those readings now help prepare us to remember the nativity of Jesus, the birth of Christ into time. And it's really just a way to remember that Jesus wants to be a part of our lives, and perhaps we have cut him out. But now he is coming again to us anew with life and with love. Today we hear the Incarnation. When the Word became flesh, when God became human. What I love about this story is that God needed Mary's consent. He asked for her approval. Now, many people may dismiss that, but Mary is like us and has free will. So while we today can't conceive of her saying no, because we grew up knowing that Mary is the mother of God, but because she had that gift of free will, just like you and I had the gift of free will, she could have said no. And I know a lot of people sometimes like to argue with that. But I say, how many times does God ask you to do something and you say no? The same God asking you to do very simple things. Not something like being an unwed mother in first century Palestine. How many times when God asks us to behave in a certain way, we say no? How many times when God asks us to pray or asks us to be a part of a community of faith and we just say, how many times when the Lord asks us to live a moral life, to live a life that respects others, to live a life of charity and of service, and we say no. Mary had that same option that we have. But I always love this one beautiful image that as the angel is asking, that there must have been this moment of silence before Mary said yes. We call it her great fiat. And I saw this one beautiful painting. I don't know who, who painted it. I don't remember where I saw it. But it was like when the angel is talking to her, the angels in heaven are looking down, listening. And all of creation is also listening, silent, waiting for her response. And that great fiat that she says to them, and let it 
be done according to your word. Mary, again, is that model for us. Remember that even though we say no so many times to God, God is waiting for our yes. He's waiting for our fiat. He is waiting because he knows that we are destined to be with him. And he desires us to live forever in heaven. He's waiting for our yes. Let's not be afraid. For God will give us the grace. And even if we think we are the worst sinner in the world, even if we think that we could never be forgiven, remember what the angel said, for nothing will be impossible for God. Let's put that in our minds. Let's put that in our hearts. And let's be like Mary this Christmas and say yes so that we can receive Jesus into our hearts, into our homes, into our minds, into our souls, and be forever changed by the radiance of his life, of his light, and the warmth of his love. With the same trust and confidence in God that Mary had, let us offer our prayers. We pray for all members of the church. May God instill in us with courage to be the sign of Christ's presence on earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people throughout the world, may they come to know lasting peace and faith in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray today for our nation, that we may be a people who ded dedicated to human life from the moment of conception to natural death. Let us pray for peace in our streets and in our homes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are hungry or homeless, may they experience Christ's comfort and consolation and have their needs met. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray today for our own faith community, our virtual community. May we be blessed with the humble faith of Mary to know and to follow God's will. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray today for the lonely, for those who will celebrate Christmas alone because of distance or the death of a loved one, for those who do not find joy in this season, that the Christ child may break into their heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the sick and all of the suffering. For those who are in hospitals and facing surgery, may they know healing, grace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our beloved dead. May they rest in eternal peace in God's heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray together for your needs and your intentions that now remain in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now let us make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And now let us join all of these prayers into one. Let us lift them up to God our Father. Let us pray just as Jesus taught. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Almighty and eternal God, we humbly ask you to hear and answer our prayers according to your will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Who is this King of glory? How shall we call him? He is Emmanuel, the broadest of ages. The King of glory comes, the nations rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices.